Hello everyone uh, and welcome to the webinar Sabre Red 360 Tips and Tricks. In this webinar, we will provide you with information on how to work with the graphical mode of the Sabre Red 360, which offers a wide range of possibilities to help you gain efficiency and better serve your customers. Stay tuned for special tips and tricks on how to work faster and deliver personalized experiences to your travelers. Well, let's go to the next slide. And before we move on with the presentation, I would like to introduce ourselves. My name is Karina Fioranelli. I'm Brazilian and I'm based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's why you will perceive an accent in my speech. Uh, I belong to the campaign team for Latin America and the Caribbean, and I will be your host for the session today. Together with me, I have Carlos Egochaga, who is a Sabre product and technology consultant. Our mission will be to monitor the chat, pass the questions to our presenters, and pay attention to your comments. We will try to have all questions answered within this one hour session. However, if any questions remain unanswered, we will try to do so in the supporting materials we will share with you within the next 24 hours. Let's review <clears throat> some basic but very important housekeeping details for this meeting. This session will last 60 minutes. Lines have been muted to guarantee a correct development of the session to avoid background noise that might affect the quality of sound and may distract our presenter. The chat window is already active. You can send your questions and comments through the chat and we will pass them out to our guest speaker. The session is being recorded and we will upload later to our YouTube channel and share this recorded session with you. Within the next 24 hours, we will send you via email a supporting material set, including the presentation delivered today, the recording and the link to the customer satisfaction survey. Now, let me welcome today's presenter. Aldo Bulla, who is a Sabre Products and Technology Consultant, will be our presenter today. Good morning, Aldo. It's a pleasure to have you here with us at this event. Now I will pass the floor to you. May your show be very effective. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Karin. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sabre 360 Tips and Tricks. We'll be reviewing um, tips and tricks regarding Sabre Red. So let me start sharing my screen. Can you probably see me, right? Yes, yes, we can right. see your screen. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So let's begin with the presentation. Well, Sabre 360 designed to be different. Um, here we're seeing some information regarding this tool and in different groups actually with suppliers, agencies and travelers. With suppliers, we can see the aim to diversify separate offers and products to generate revenue and profits. And um, the suppliers want more control over the supply management through the different channels we offer and also uh, with the loyalty programs. That's mainly the supplier part of, of this. Then we have the agencies, you, um, that you need access to all content and availability in real time. And you're looking for different ways to hire and increase personalized service. Simplifying actually solutions to uh, drive the agent efficiency. So actually you're having like, as you can see both, you're having things coming from the suppliers and also the link with the travelers that are looking for um, travel options that best meet their needs, as well as searching for these options and finding information online. And they want advantages in loyalty and personalized offers. So they want to get all this, but personalized for them. And this is our role here. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. 
here we can see uh, Saber 360 itself as platform enabled. We have all the uh, industry leading selection of content in different platforms, as you can see here on this slide. Um, these are all the devices in which we can use Saber Red. It's easy to use. Um, you will be able to use graphical, intuitive, efficient, and common driven task flows that will reduce the travel complexity. So we will see this in a moment. And also you will be able to customize your Saber Red. So uh, modifying configurations that will help you um, support your business strategy. So let's now proceed to what would be our um, demonstration, okay? Let me stop sharing my screen for a moment. And I will go now. To share. Saber screen. OK, so. This is. Zero screen, and we will proceed now with the um, PNR creation. Okay, so first step, let me go here to Common Helper. As you can see, this is uh, the Saver platform, and we have many options on top that will help us create our reservation and uh, book, air, hotel, car, and more options. We will now go as a first step to profile. Let me mention something before we begin. Uh, we are here, you can see on top CERT. This is a certification mode, it's a testing environment. So the responses here might take some more time and the availability will not be exactly as in production as, as a real one, okay? Um, so let me now proceed to display uh, a profile. The profile will be bringing information into the booking, information from the traveler, that will help us complete the reservation. And also, um, for example, when booking air, the system will be able to identify what type of kind or kind of travel this passenger is making. And um, using the air preferences, for example, will be able to get a, a better results. Actually, that will be the, the way of saying it. So here we can search for a profile by profile name, or we can use any of these other fields, like email address or phone. If you don't have the name of the profile, you can also select uh, these types. I can leave it as any, in case you don't know exactly which one, which type of profile you're trying to display. And you also have some other uh, qualifiers, like system ID, associated profile, DK number, and template. So if, for example, you have a DK number attached to the profile, but you don't remember any of these other details, you can just type here the DK number and search for the profile, and the system will be able to return that profile for you. Now we will keep it pretty basic. I will just type the name of the profile we are looking for. Okay, and here we have the result. As you can see, all the information appears listed here down below. The name, we have date of birth, and many more details attached to this passenger, email address, form of payment, and more. And on these tabs on top, we have traveler PNRs and profile history. Profile history would be showing all the updates performed to the profile. And in Traveler PNRs, you will be able to find all those reservations that are attached to this um, to this profile. So if you don't remember what was the locator or when you booked the reservation for this profile, you just go to the profile and the bookings appear here attached. Also the ones canceled. So this might be useful since you go here, you click and you get your reservation on the screen. So let's now go back to profile information. 
here you will see the associated profiles to this danger profile. And if ready, we then go copy to BNR. Okay, this little asterisk here will show that the information has been moved. Let me go a little bit now to the manual command that we will not be using it today, just to attach the printer profile information. Remember these printers uh, can be saved in just one key. So you press an F key, a PF key on your keyboard and you get the printers associated. You do this and retry. Okay, perfect. So all the printers are assigned. Let's go back to our graphical view. And here you see we have a suitcase, right? With a green dot over there. This is a trip summary and we'll be showing all the information that you have attached to the booking that you're creating. So if we click where it says PNR, okay, it will pop up and show the details that we have so far for this booking. We have no itinerary or quotes, traveler information, this is the name. And as you can see here, uh, there's there are some more lines of information. All those that show a number other than zero between the brackets mean that they, there's information loaded there. For example, security information. You can see we have details here. If we go to form of payment. So um, let's now move to booking the air itinerary. Okay, so now let's go and click on top of the screen. We go to air and we have different options here. We have our shopping, air availability, air schedules, and fair quote. Since now, what we are looking is to um, sell the availability, but with the price, we're going to air shopping instead of just air availability. Okay, so let's now search for our itinerary option. We type the airport codes, let's select date. And here, as you can see, we have two lines, two segments, right? This is the first one, and in case you want to add a return or another line of information, you can do it. If you want to add more, you can do it. And if you want to remove this one, you can do it as well and just leave a one-way trip, okay? And by clicking, on this field, you get the round trip completed. So you're going out of Panama City to Miami, and here it will complete the fields. We add the date. Here we have the time. We can select uh, morning, afternoon, evening, or any hour during the day, the same for this other flight. We have the passenger type, and these carriers, Delta and AA, are coming actually from the profile we moved from danger. So this is really important to consider because um, the profile will be moving important information when booking your trip and needs to be there before you search for uh, your flights. So this is the reason why these flights will appear here. Then we have, we can include cabins or select the amount of stops calendar search, this would be looking flexible dates or weekends. And we have also advanced qualifiers um, in which you can select many more options to filter your search, okay? We're going to keep this pretty simple. We're going to remove this as well. Let's check it out. Okay, perfect. And we will leave just the dates, cities and these carriers to include in our search. Let's go to shopper fair. Remember, as I said before, uh, we are in a testing environment, so responses might take some more time. Great, let me close the trip summary right now. And this is the result we get when searching for this itinerary. Okay, we have a bar at the top, a decision-making bar, 
that will show details regarding uh, this flight, these flights, this itinerary, and how to uh, actually decide if this is the best option or if you need to change it for a different date, for example, or other possibilities. So here, for trend is showing no data available. This would be um, actually showing the behavior of the fare and if it's going down or up right now. Then we have the travel seasonality. Here we have information. I would show the uh, travel volume. In this case, it's medium. We have uh, some weeks during the year in which is lower, some others in which is higher. And you can select if you want to change the week in which you are traveling, you can select here and just do reshop and the system will be changing your travel option. Okay, then we have um, flexible dates. Here we already have, this is the option we're selecting right now from July the 20th to the 27th. All these options in green mean that you already have the best price, but it could happen that maybe you have one in gray in which it's, uh, or maybe yours right now is in gray and you want to change it to another one that is in green. So you can decide to click, for example, here. And as you can see at the bottom, your trip dates are changing from July 18 to 28, 10 days. And you can shop this option. So from this uh, from this flexible dates chart, you can just click on any of the options and like reshop your travel itinerary. We're going to leave it as it is. Okay, no fair range found. This shows the fair range will be um, showing fares or actually um, how much other passengers have paid for this trip. If more or less, it will show you an average. And where it says alternate airports, it will show if there's any, for example, if there's any airport close to Miami for your arrival, that would show a different fare going out of Panama City. And if there's a better fare there, it will show you the alternative airport here with the amount and you can then click and shop uh, to select that option. So this is the decision making bar. Let's close it. And we have a small bar here that will be showing um, cheapest, fastest, and best. On this case, we only have American Airlines responses. But in case we have other airlines, it will show like a list of um, options order by amount as well as time. And then best here will be considering both both options and will show you um, the, the, the results based on the other two alternatives. So let's close this and we go now to our um, itinerary option, okay? So remember we have when when searching availability or air shopping actually within Saver Red, you will have around 200 options. So um, you always have the the alternative or the possibility here on top of filtering your results. In this case, you only have one airline, public and Saver, but you can modify the range of the price. Um, you can the duration as well and, and some other um, qualifiers that can be modified in order to filter your search to reduce the amount of options in case you see there are too many um, you can do it this way also you can sort you can sort by price duration part of time or like all together all the options together the system will be looking for the best option and will sort it by uh, but that way. Okay, so now we can go to the flights we are selecting. Let's go with our first option. As you can see on this corner, there's an icon that is pretty similar to this one, profile. This means 
that the uh, the option here selected it's coming from a search in which a profile with uh, with a preferred airline has been added. This case for this case it's American Airlines, so it's reading the information from there and returning this option. Then checking the result itself, we can see if you go navigate through uh, the result, you will be seeing options like uh, this, the flight number with the operated information. You can see information about uh, the airport. In case you're having a connection, you will see it as well. We have the airplane information as well as the baggage. It will give you these details within the search. So you're not yet uh, selling anything. You already can see these details. The uh, information regarding the class of service and the time. And here, if you step here, you will see the base and taxes that will be applying for this option. Okay, you have here commission, and uh, if we click here, we'll be opening all the information regarding this this itinerary selection we have made. So from Panama to Miami on flight AA2454, the return is on this other flight. If you click on this one, you'll see how the information changes. And underneath the flight numbers, here we have um, some rule information. It's just a reference of uh, exchanging or refunding and some other details that you might consider useful when searching for uh, for the itinerary. You can click over here anywhere on top of this information or on this green icon. And what you would see is the, um, the fair information. You have here all the rules listed and you can select any of them and we'll be showing, for example, here, penalties. You will be seeing all the details stored for this for this particular fair basis. Um, on, on this side, you have the other fair basis. Since it's the same, you will see pretty much the same information, but it could be that actually you have many flights and if different fares apply, you can just be, you can just go and click on the fair basis and move from one fair to the other. In case you have other passenger types, the logic would be pretty much the same one. You will select if you have an infant, a child, or any other passenger type, and you will get here the fair information, the fair basis, and also the rules so you can navigate and, uh, and review them. Let me close this. Um, okay, so we go back now to the result of our search. As you can see here, we have details regarding the flight time, meals, equipment, and some other uh, information. And down here on this widgets, we'll be able to um, locate the, the following the following information. We have road happy. It show, it's showing no data available. Uh, this is actually information that will be coming from um, the airline itself and will be related more to entertainment in flight, in flight entertainment, I should have said. Uh, if you have uh, internet connection and uh, all, all the information re related to the travel experience. So it will be appearing here if loaded. Then we have the seat map that you can select it. You can open it and see the options. Okay. You can see here the sitmap without selling the um, the itinerary. As you can see, we haven't sell, uh, sold anything yet. And you can check the availability on the plane already. 
Okay. Close this. And let's go now to branded fares. All right. This flight, uh, depending on the flight that you're selecting on the, the route that you're selecting, um, you will be able to get more or less uh, fare, branded fares, depending on the airline loading that information into the system. Here, since it's a pretty basic uh, routing, it shows two options, but you can have, can have many more, three, four, five or more, depending on the airline. But here we have two and we can compare this. Uh, and this is this is fine for this example. So we have American Airlines. We have main cabin and main cabin flexible. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see how uh, this structure will be comparing the baggage of both fares as well and some other conditions. So you can easily review which one would be the best option for you to select. And then you can just go and click on the fare. So it turns green and you can sell and save price. You can select this one, the one you prefer. We can go to the main coming flexible. And when ready, you go and sell, sell and save price. Okay, before we continue, um, Carlos or Kari, is there, do we have any questions about this process so far? Hi, Aldo. I just, uh, I just see one. And, oh, no, here we have. Oh, we have one question from Tammy. And, and she says that, if we can talk about the proposal option uh, that uh, Andy unlocking the flights. So uh, okay. I believe uh, there will be probably the proposal and the little lock that you have. Right, right, right. So Excellent. If you can have a so, question. Yes, let, let's do the following. Uh, I will leave the proposal option for later on, if that's okay. Uh, regarding the lock on the flights, let me just mention it right now. Here, as you can see, there's a lock next to each of the flight options. And this lock will help us if we want to click on it. It will be blocking the uh, the flight. How? Um, for example, let's now this this search is gone, but I can still mention how it works. If we click on this lock for the, the flight AA2454, what the system will do is search for uh, the second flight. So it will be searching for combinations of flights in which the 2454 is the first one always, and it will be changing the return option for something else. So uh, the same logic would apply for this other lock is the same. If you block it, it will keep the 959 as return and will show you uh, outbound flights that will be combining with, uh, with this already locked file with, uh, fly we selected. Okay. Okay, Alda. Uh, maybe Karina has another question. So do Karina, have... do you have any? Yep. Any no, questions? no, not for now. Aldo, I think you can continue okay. and we can continue monitoring okay. the questions. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. All right. Excellent. So um, here we have the price code. This is what have been stored. And now what I would do, let me make this bigger. I will proceed to close the reservation. As you can see on, on this price code before I, I close it, we can see all the details, fair rules again, and all the details about the um, the fair information we just stored. Let me go really quick through these options. We can see the taxes. We can see the fair calculation out of the PQ. Information regarding baggage as well. The seat map we already 
uh, we have been there before, but you can click and select the seats. We have the air extras, we're not going there right now. And we have brand options. Again, in case you want to go back to another fare, to the other one, because you selected the flexible and you don't want it, you can go here, you can save price and the system will be storing that main cabin price uh, in the PNR for you. So now the price quote has been retained as we can see at the bottom and in um, segments one and two in Victor class. What I will do now is go back to the booking on the suitcase. I click on PNR. Okay. All right. And here we see it's um, showing the main details about our PNR. We can see it says no PNR on this side since the booking is not closed yet. Passenger name. And these are mandatory items. This five, the air extra is just optional. But these two that we see in red are missing right now. So we won't be able to close our PNR if we don't complete it with these fields. And we have two ways of adding these details into our booking. We can go through the add options that we have here, but we will be adding them one by one. Or we can go here instead to where it says add to PNR. We click and we, under this drop down menu, we can select, for example, several fields at the same time. So in just one transaction, we can get all the information together. Receive from, I can leave that or just type my name. We have ticketing time limit. We can leave it there if you want to add, um, well, here a queue you know, on this empty box. You can add a queue as well. And when ready, we click and add to PNR. Okay, both items have been added. Excellent. So, as you can see on top, we have all these five options checked in green. So, we now can go to end and retrieve our booking. Remember, we are in the testing mode, so it might take some time for the system to close this booking. Okay, great, excellent. So the reservation has been just created. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but here we have a Sabre locator as well as an airline locator underneath. And um, on our trip summary, in which we are seeing the, um, the air itinerary added there, we also see the HK1 status for both flights. So we can say these flights are confirmed and uh, the confirmation uh, was here, but also you can find it inside the uh, the summary. Or if you go to uh, itinerary, you can see also the confirmation over there. So um, now that the PNR has been ended, um, let me go again back to Carlos and Kari. Do you have any questions from participants about this process? Uh, hi, Aldo. We have a couple of questions. So let me uh, evacuate this here. So, uh, Monica asked if the shop shouldn't the shop provide multiple fares. So um, yes, let's see right. if I understand. If you go to shop, yeah, Jimmy's over here. Or, or on the result, actually. I believe 
uh, the question mainly is supposed to be on the on the response. So when you shop, response. you can see multiple fares. I, I believe the answer is yes. That's what we saw, right? That we had right, right. different options. Correct, correct. Um, when searching, when searching for the air shopping, you will get on this particular case, this profile was um, selecting as prefer airline American Airlines, but uh, it will show you many other airlines if operating that uh, that route just by you can remove the, the the qualifier for the airline and see all the options but yes you will you're supposed to be receiving uh, depending on the flight but around 200 options with the uh, the fares and yep yeah, all the, the information we have seen here uh, I, I'm not sure if that would be answering the question from her but maybe well, Monica, if that is actually the answer you're looking for, or or if not, please go into the chat and make a comment on it so we can go back uh, later during presentation. Um, then we have, uh, well, there is one question here, and uh, but basically a couple of questions regarding documentation. So the the answer is yes, we have. Tons of documentation in many different topics, like air shopping or uh, or or any other question, creating PNR, etc. Those documentation, uh, all the documentation is uh, on central on Saber Central under the training uh, option. You can go into library, content library, and you will find there all the information that you need. All the documentation is there, so you can see it, download it to your uh, your your workstation and being able to review it at any time. Uh, that okay. would be, we okay. have one, one last question that from Tammy saying sure. that if we need the COM entry first before ER it, are, are you familiar okay. with the COM entry, uh, Aldo? Which entry, I'm sorry? COM. Um, not sure, maybe she can specify a little bit. Well, Sammy. I can answer. I can answer the question okay. for you because okay. I, I was not uh, familiar with the with the commentary until a couple of days ago. Uh, commentary is an entry that will link uh, the the, uh, for example, uh, uh, what do you call the uh, SSRs, right? SSRs with the uh, names of the reservation, basically, and the answer would be yes in the event. Uh, you did uh, general uh, SSRs, right? And then after those general SSRs, you add names on your reservation. But if not, it's not necessarily. Anyway, we will add that question on the on the log that we have, and we will answer it. So it will be available for everybody. A detailed explanation on the commentary. And okay, that's perfect. It. So we great. don't have any more for now. Okay. Great. Let me continue then. So um, let me go back to. I, I think we have gone already, but let's check the tabs that we have inside the PNR right now. That we have more information. We have the home tab, which shows a summary of the booking with all the details. We can go to. Let me let me do the following. Let me just clear this. Remember, with Shift Backspace, you can clear your screen, and we go again to the booking great so we have the summary if we go to itinerary we can see the details as well as the seat map over here if you need to modify change the booking class or change the date or if you want to price with any of these alternatives you can do it from that segment from that option i'm sorry the same thing would apply for this other segment and um, this will be the itinerary tab. Then we go to quotes, what we will call uh, PQ. And we have the information regarding the uh, the fare, taxes, all we have seen already, it's stored here. We have our extras if we want to add to this booking as well. And if this is an old PQ and you want to refresh the price quote, you can do it here. If the 
for example, if the, the fair, if this was priced a couple of days ago and you want to uh, refresh it, you can go this way. So um, quotes is, is this one. You can see we have price quote reissue. In case we were processing an exchange, you have the, the known PQR. The PQR will be stored underneath. So you will see it under quotes. Then we have traveler information. We have a list of names. In this case, we only have Barbara. And if you go to this drop down menu, we see many other options uh, with details. All those that show a different number than zero mean you're having uh, information listed from payment. We have email. Um, and you can add information there. The easiest way would be to add to PNR as we were seeing a few minutes ago. Let me leave this as traveler. We have the remarks tab with all the details under that field. Ticketing shows no ticket so far since we haven't issued anything. And the history tab uh, starts adding information after we end the booking for the first time. And it will be showing all the details here. You see the Aldo here that I received from that I entered manually appears here, the time, date, and the action. The logic for the action is pretty much the same, the same as on the host and cryptic formats. Since the A, it's for adding, nine, for example, for phone number, and then the format, um, and say X for canceling or removing. So the logic is, is the same one. Let's go back to home. We have the summary here. And what I will do now is proceed to um, show you some other details under trip summary. And afterwards, we will issue the, the ticket for this passenger. Okay, so on trip summary, we have apart from the add to PNR, so we have gone there already with several fields to select. We have the traveler information here to edit or delete in case you need. And here on each of the segments, you go to these three dots and you have many options for uh, to apply to your itinerary. You can price, you can select seats or air extras. You can also add hotel, uh, add a car, book a car, and some other options regarding surface sectors. If you need to modify anything on this itinerary segment, you can do it through here as well. And if you need to delete the segment, it's the same, the same logic. Let me show you something now. Since, I mean, we're not going to sell a hotel or car, but let me just show you how this works. So you can have it. Um, and let me just close it. Let me do it the other way around. If you open hotel here, everything is empty. You only have this client ID that is coming from the profile, but then you have to type manually all the information for your search. So that's the reason why we go here to add hotel. You, you see, we have the date, we have the location, the nights. This information is coming directly from your itinerary. So you don't really need to go to hotel and start typing everything there. It pops up, it comes from your segment and you don't need to worry about it. Then you shop hotels and the system will return the results for you. The same logic applies for a car. If you try to book a car, it's the same. You have the location, you have the dates, even the times from your flights are being taken into consideration for the search. And this frequent uh, renter number comes from the profile. Again, the profile is very important to, to have it and to use it at the very beginning of uh, the PNR creation. In case you don't have a profile for that passenger, you can just add the information manually into the booking. Um, but if you have a profile, it's yeah, it's really important to uh, take advantage of these things and uh, add it uh, at the very beginning of your reservation process. So 
Uh, let's close this car. We're not shopping any cars now. In case you shop hotel cars, you will see them over here. Right now we only have the air itinerary. And uh, what I would do now is I will proceed to issue the ticket with the quote we have uh, stored here and get the, the, um, the, well, the ticket issued for, for this passenger. Before I continue, let me again bring Kari and Carlos uh, to let me know if there, there are any questions so far about this. Yes, my friend, there are several questions on the chat. Okay. So it's kind of a, uh, let's let me choose one of this. Oh, uh, I have here one, let me, because it comes and comes so. <laughs> it's okay, you can get a few of them. Uh, uh, Dara Workler is asking, how do I add documentation or remarks in the PNR? Can you show us the, the remark, uh, how, how to add a remark, please? Sure, sure. We go here to the remarks tab. Remember, we have, this is like the summary, click on remarks, and we add remarks. This is one way. Remember, uh, another way is going to add to PNR, and you select here, remark, and you have alpha coded, corporate number, free text. You select, and you then just type the information you need. If we go to select another one, for example, historical, you can have them at the same time. That's why it's always better to go to add to PNR. But you can do it this way through the remarks tab and just add. You get pretty much the same as you can see. It's the same way. It's a different way to to get to the same place. Okay. So the great, Aldo. Thank you. Uh, there is also some questions regarding, for example, the, uh, you see on your screen where, where the uh, record locator is, there is a, uh, a triangle at the right, right? With a, a, a yellow color, you see that? Right. Uh, Correct. So uh, what does it mean? Why is it yellow? Or if it's changed okay. on another I, color side? Right. Not? Actually, um. Yeah, this is, it's just a, a warning. Let me do the following. Because uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I've changed anything into the booking. Let me just proceed to end it. So I'm pretty sure it's related to the fact that we are. Okay, let me end and retrieve. Okay. This this icon here, it's actually just to 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 pay attention to that you might be missing information in the booking. Um, the, the mandatory fields are here and have been completed. It's like this bar you have here that is not completed. You see, eighty three percent. It's the air extra. If you add their extras, that information that uh, part of the PNR would be completed, and that icon should be disappearing. <laughs> Correct. Okay, so every time we see a, a, a yellow triangle, let's say, let's yeah, make let's, sure it's, just, it's completed. Yes, yep. it's completed. Actually, it will depend because in your case, if you don't need any air extra for you, the reservation is basically complete because you have traveler for number and itinerary. If I want a hundred percent thing, I am supposed to do even the optional things. But in my case, I don't need it, so I'm okay. I'm good to go, right? Right. It, it will. Correct. Those will be on red if I don't have a phone number, for example. Then instead of the green check mark, I will have a red check mark because certainly it's something missing and it's important in order to close a reservation on Saber. Right. The system okay. will let you know. Yep. Yeah, if you're missing anything. Correct. Uh, one question, one last question from Naida. Uh, it's, she is asking, is, is there somewhere where I can see the ancillary charges? So if I want, uh, I don't know, an, an, an extra package or, I don't know, a, a pet charge or an accompanied minor, for example. So where right. I can find that information? Ancillaries, basically. Right. 
Right, right, right. If you go here to quotes, um, actually on, on the selling process, you will be seeing the extras option, but if the booking is already completed or already ended and you don't have your availability over there right now, you can go straight to quotes, then you open this quote and you have the air express option here. And you can then uh, select like the air express appearing for that are, have been loaded for that flight by the airline. Um, like if you need to book more baggage or extra leg room or any other condition or any other option coming from the air express, uh, they will appear here if loaded yeah. by the airline. Yeah, exactly. So uh, remember that not necessarily means air extras will appear if the airline decided to sell air extras through the GDS and the ones that appear here on the air extra options will be the ones that the airline decided to sell through. So if you don't see the air extra you want here on Sabre, that means it's not even on other GDSs, it's something that the airline sells directly, either calling them or on their websites. The airlines has the ability to decide which air extras are right. going to, uh, to are going to Up offer here, right. through yep. the GDSs. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much, Aldo. We, we will continue monitoring the chat Excellent. and we'll let you know. Perfect. Great then. Thank you, Carlos. And let me then proceed to, um, let me clean my screen. Let me then proceed to issue the the ticket for this passenger. Okay, so we have, um, let's just do a final check. We have our quote. We have the a traveler over there. We have the form of payment here, but we're missing the security information. So we can go here again, add security, or we go to add to PNR, but we get to the same place. So add security, secure flight information. Okay, secure flight. And you can see the information has been loaded. We have the name, date of birth. If you need to add more details, you can hit the plus sign. Let's add to PNR now. Okay. Excellent. So now security information shows number one. It's been added. Remember to save your changes. Okay. Excellent. And we now end and retrieve. Here on this option next to end and retrieve, we have many other options. Is you need to just end the PNR or ignore, ignore and retrieve, or also cloning. Okay, we'll just now end and retrieve. Okay, perfect. So let's proceed now to issue this, this ticket. We have everything there. We go to this option. We have that um, will bring up the workflows. We have uh, a list, an important list of options here. We're not going to navigate to them right now. We'll just go to issue ticket. That's the one we will use. And you can see we have a return fare for um, Barb Dinger AA. We have the fare basis, it's a system, price quote, store today, and the total fare. In case you are issuing um, an exchange, a reissue, or any air extras, this would be the way of doing it. As you can see in the workflows, it's called issue ticket EMD. So if you have any other things to issue, this is the right place. So if ready, we click on continue. We will use a stored form of payment. Um, you can select commission here if needed, and we have other qualifiers that you can add to your ticketing entry. PQ1, 619.67, passenger one, issue. Okay, 
Excellent. So this is the response. Successfully issued a ticket for PQ1. We have the um, response message over here. We can just close. And this process will already, when issuing this ticket through this path, will already end your booking. Okay. Um, it's still, I mean, if you want to end your booking after ticketing, uh, it's never about practice, just to make sure you save all the information inside. But on this particular case, the system will do that for you. So we now can go into the ticketing tab and, well, saying issue a ticket. Hold on. Let me close the workflow. Let me try to end it just in case. As I said before, it's never about practice. Remember the testing mode takes some more time. Okay, perfect. Great. So now we go to ticketing and we see the ticket number and uh, um, ticketing details. And if you open up the ticket information, you can see coupon status open, the ferry quote, and some more details, also the baggage regarding um, where we just generated. Form of payment, base, taxes, and some other details as well. You have our extras. Again, in case you need to go there and sell any of your extras. And if you need to check taxes for calc, you can go this way. If you need to exchange ticket, well, you can proceed. We are not exchanging one right now. And um, this would be actually the way of getting our booking completed. So the passenger already has a ticket issued for this trip. Let's uh, now do the following. Let me open this um, proposal option. Well, actually, let's see if I can do it from, from the air shopping. Let me go really quick here to answer the question we got at the beginning about propose. Let me do anything here. I will do just a quick search. Okay. And if here we click on propose, now now we're having the booking. I don't want to like get out of the booking we are working right now, but if you hit here propose, the system will generate a proposal for um, this itinerary option with this fare that you can send on an email to your passenger. And um, that proposal will be containing a code that you can then uh, display here. If you're search, you can search by last name for that uh, passenger proposal. And you have an option here to display proposal once you bring up the passenger information. Um, hold on, let's see if I can just ignore this for a moment. Maybe I can get out of the, of the booking. Just ignore the PNR. Okay, let me do it really quick because we are on time right now. Let's see if I can. Okay. 
Okay. So we do this. Repose. And okay, hold on. Display proposal. This is a proposal being generated. When I clicked on propose, you can go on top and display the proposal just generated. There's a code here. Okay, you can share this. and save it so you can send it to um, an email to the to the customer, to the traveler. This is the number for the trip proposal, is a code that once you, um, if the passenger comes back to you saying that he wants that proposal, you come here and you will be searching for last name and given name, and then you can add the code just to bring the proposal up, okay? I'm, I'm not going to do the whole process right now because we are already on time, but actually uh, we can send you later on as well some uh, reference information about how trip proposal works, but it's pretty simple. You can save your proposal. You can then just bring it up, just uh, the one you saved, and you don't need to create the booking from scratch. You, will, you would already have all the information on the proposal uh, with that code that is being generated on this side. So let me close this right now and let me um, go back to the booking we're having for Barbara Dinger and also go back to Kari and Carlos to see if we have any questions right now regarding the ticketing process. Well, um, Aldo, thank you so much for your um, presentation. We do have uh, many questions on the chat, but unfortunately we will not have time to tackle all of those. Um, we promise to put all of those in a document and send uh, the questions and the answers together with the material set that we will share with you guys over the next um, 24 hours. And thank you very much for your interactions through the chat. And thank you for your participation in today's webinar. We really hope that the information shared has been useful and added value to your business. Um, so pay attention to the materials that we are going to send you along with the customer satisfaction survey. Um, and it's very important for us if you complete the survey so that we can improve um, for the upcoming sessions. So thank you again uh, for your participation and we really hope to see you in the upcoming webinars. Thank you so much and have you all an excellent rest of the day. Thank you.